my name is Ashley and welcome to my watercolor YouTube channel. I'm a self-taught artist and I would love to help you learn all the tips and tricks that I have gained over the years through experience. So I hope that you enjoy these videos. I hope that they're helpful to you. If they are, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for stopping by. Hi everybody. So I don't know about you, but I have been gardening a lot. I am really into plants right now. Uh, it's a very trendy thing. And I wanted to show you a little tutorial on how to paint a plant wall. Um, it also doubles as a how to paint a Bible verse in a creative way. Um, I have a friend that is graduating college, and so I wanted to make her something to put in her room to remind her of the plans that God has for her future. And she also likes plants. So we've combined those two, and we're going to um, paint some little shelves with plants on them and then a Bible verse. I'm going to attempt to paint the Bible verse with watercolor in calligraphy, which is incredibly difficult. We will see how it goes. But yeah, okay, so to begin with, hopefully you can see this sketch. I know it's really light. Um, I've used a watercolor pencil, which I've shown you about in the past. These are Artists Loft. Um, I just use a color that is close to the color that I'm going to be painting with, so in this case green, because it's mostly plants. Um, and I've just lightly sketched my shelves, my plants, and my words, um, just to keep the spacing good. Um, I'm using my Master's Touch uh, size 6 round brush, um, it's from Hobby Lobby, and my Prima Marketing watercolors. So I'm using the Woodlands palette, um, but I'm also using this new one that I just got that is called Currents. So it has a lot of blues and greens, and we're going to play with some of those to make some good variety with the plants. And then, just like usual, I have my water cup and my paper towel. So, basically, how we're going to do this, I'm going to start by painting the plants, and then I will do the vases, and then I will do the shelves, and then I will do the background, and then I will do the calligraphy on the top. So that's, what, five steps. Okay. So, to start out with, um, I have a couple of greens here that I really like, and I'm just going to start... Um, using these to fill in some of the plants. So I have a reference photo that I found on Pinterest that I used for some of the composition and color scheme. So the photo has a little plant that's like this. I'm going to show you some different techniques and I'll explain them as I go. So this is going to be this kind of yellowy, light yellowy green. We'll fill in those little leaves there. Okay. And I'm not going to refill with more pigment quite yet because I want there to be a little bit of variety going on there. Okay. So we're just going to do some of them a little bit lighter. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to show you. Um, so that was my, the paper was dry, the brush was wet, and I just put a little bit of water on there, put that on there, so that was a wet on dry technique. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off, and I'm going to get a little bit darker green here, and I'm not going to get it super wet, it's going to be fairly dry here, but pretty dark. And I'm just going to start working this onto the edges of that light green. And we're going to create some interesting contrast color there, make it look like a little bit of texture. And since this light green is still pretty wet, it will diffuse in there nicely. Okay. Just on a few of the edges. And I tried to sketch this out in a way that the leaves would not be touching too much, so there wouldn't be too much bleed from leaf to leaf, but we have some good distinction in the leaves. Okay, there. Maybe bring that up a little bit more there. And then in this one. Okay, so we're just going to let that dry, but that almost kind of looks like a snake plant or something like that. We're not being super specific about um, the types of plants here. I just wanted to show you some different styles. So there is one, and we'll let that dry and we'll see how it goes when they add another layer, depending on how we like that. Um, and then now let's do, let's just move up. So we'll do this one up here next, and I'm going to use a different shade of green here. So I haven't used this palette 
a lot yet. So I'm gonna sample some of these greens and kind of get myself a scheme going. That one, that one, I don't really like that one. That one's better, okay. That one's like a bright, happy green. That's more like a teal, okay. And these are more blue, so it kind of gets bluer as we go. But I kind of like that. So for this one, let's use kind of this more bluey green. I'll move that a little bit so I have more space for my elbow. Um, okay, and we're just gonna start kind of filling this in. Do some that are a little bit darker in here. Okay. And at this point, I'm not really using my reference photo for these colors. Um, I mainly was just using it for the composition, but if you don't feel super confident in mixing your own colors and figuring out what colors go where, you could totally use a reference photo um, that you like the color scheme and style of for the whole thing. That is a great way to start out so you don't feel like you have to come up with quite so much on your own. Um, okay. And these ones have a little bit more movement. So you can see I sketched them to be a little bit more wild. Um, okay. There's that. And I think we're going to let that one dry for now um, and maybe add some little darker bits after it dries a little bit. Um, over here, um, let's use... Let's see, I like this green. This one's good. These ones are kind of just... Let's see, we'll do a different technique. These ones are just like little fluffy bits coming out of little bottles. So this is a different technique. Um, it's called uh, dry on wet. So I'm going to wet the paper just a little bit and some little fluffs there. And then I'm gonna get some of this green and I'm just gonna kind of drop it in and let it diffuse on its own. Okay. We'll see how that dries. We might want to adjust that a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And let's see here. Do a little stems coming in there. Perfect. All right. And then move up here. So this is a different, uh, more rounded type of leaf. Um, and let's see here what color do I want to use. I'll use this one. I'm just gonna get that a little bit wet. My paint pans start to get really messy after a little bit. Um, I, want it, I don't want it to be super dark. I'm just gonna put, add some water. So with watercolor, you can't really add white. Some palettes might have white, but that doesn't usually work very well. So you just add water and mix it just like I did in the pan there. Okay. And we're just gonna create some more rounded leaves coming off of this stem here. okay with those touching a little bit. Make a little stem going down there. Okay. Okay, Got a little bit more pigment on there. go okay and that's pretty wet um, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'm gonna add some little accent colors in there okay and now that I look at it I'm not a huge fan of this color so we're gonna lighten that up a little bit I'm just gonna take the excess water off there and I'm gonna add a little bit different shade in there and let that mix a little bit okay oopsie and my hand touched that one. Darn, okay, that's all right. Okay, so then now we have this one. It's kind of like a string of pearls plant. And we have not used this one other than the accent of the snake plant. So we're gonna do, I'm just gonna lighten that up a little bit there. Okay, and we're gonna do some little, little strings coming down. fill those up with little little bobbles 
look like a string of pearls. What I really like about this brush is that it can do really big strokes, but it can also do these tiny little dots, and depending on how much you press and the angle and such, you can get some good variation um, in the shapes there. That's so cute. That looks good. Okay. Alrighty, so I'm going to use one of these bluer greens again. I'll go for this end one here. Um, and this is kind of more like a succulent, I guess. So we're just going to do some big leaf things coming off layer. Just follow the shape of a succulent. A little bit too wet. Just gonna dry that off a little bit there. The nice thing about watercolor is when it diffuses and makes these nice um, bleeds, so we're gonna take advantage of that. We're gonna go back and add a little bit more texture to some of these. So this is just the first layer and we're just going to kind of let things dry and see how we feel about it. Sometimes I do just one layer and that's totally fine. Sometimes I do a lot, just depends on how realistic you want things to look and um, yeah, what kind of style you're going for. So in this case, with the when I'm adding a different pigment onto a wet uh, section that's still a bit damp, you get the impact of having multiple colors in it or multiple layers like you can see how this one dried um, but it looks really nice how it connects there um, okay so we're gonna go up here in this last little shelf here and let's see let's do another one of this yellow green see I've had this old palette for a long time and I really like the greens in it and I got these new greens hoping that I would like them as well but I'm just gonna use my old greens I guess that's okay. Alright, so we're going to go up here and we're going to... Actually, let's start on the left side. So this one is... I really like this plant. I have no idea what it is. If somebody knows what it's called, let me know. But um, I really like how leafy it is. Okay. So I've got some... I sketched some stems in just so I could have some direction. And I'm trying to keep the stems and the leaves separate so that it's not just one big blob. That's the hard part about doing paintings with tiny little details and tiny little leaves like this. Sometimes they all kind of blur together, but um, okay. And then it looks like we need another slightly darker green. We've got some good blue greens in there, some yellowies. Okay, so we're going to go back to this one. Just these little tiny circles. And then the little tiny stems. And you'll notice how some of these I've brought the stems all the way down because I'm going to paint those as if they were clear. And then other ones I'm going to paint as if they were ceramic or stone or something like that. So um, I'm just creating a little bit of variety. I try to create variety in the shape of the leaves and the or the size of the leaves, the shape of the leaves, um, some of them are droopy, some of them are not, the colors, the vases, just to make it interesting to the eye. Um, okay, so this one I'm feeling could be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to take this darker green up here and just put less water in it and start diffusing that in a little bit again with the dry on wet technique. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go in and add some details again to this one. Create some little layers here. Cause this one's pretty much dry. So I'm just gonna do a couple strings that are a little bit darker. 
make it a little more interesting there. This one's still drying. Add some little accents in there. Okay. I actually really like how that one turned out. I think that looks pretty good. This one that we did those little edges and darker, I'm just going to add some final little pieces in there that are just a little bit darker it's still. Okay. That's looking pretty good there. I'm happy with that one. Pretty happy with these ones. Make some little, a little bit more definition on there. I think that would help. Okay. Okay, cool. So, these ones are still drying, so we're not sure about those quite yet, but I'll start on the bottom with this vase. Um, I'm thinking that the background is gonna be blue. So I'm going to do some neutral kind of vases, keep like the blue-green neutral theme. So this vase, this one's like kind of a stone pot. I sketched this in already, but you can always, I mean, you can always change it if you feel like you want it to be bigger by the time you add the leaves in, maybe you've changed your mind on the shape you want. That's the nice thing about watercolor pencil is that you can actually erase it <laughs> if you want to. and you don't have to worry about um, the pencil lines because they'll disintegrate in the water anyway. So even if you sketch on top of it a hundred times, it'll probably disappear anyways. Um, so that's pretty handy. Okay. And then again, we're just going to add um, some little bits of darker spots in there. That looks pretty good. Some shadow for under where the plant would be creating shadow. Okay. And then I'm going to do some gray. So the gray, like I said before, you can't really add white, but you can add water to lighten it. Um, okay, so that one's pretty wet. I'll try to dry some of that off there. Okay, and then we'll go in here and we'll just start filling in. You definitely want to wait until the plant part is dry, or at least mostly dry. It might look kind of cool if it bleeds a little bit, but you don't want it bleeding too much. Okay, that got a little too wet. Go back and get some darker pigment there and let that diffuse. Okay. Okay, that one looks a little more like cement, so that's kind of cool. These ones are glass, so I'm actually going to leave those just like that. Those ones are also glass, so I'm just going to have to be careful to go around those when I do the background. That's all right. Um, this one, doing like a light beige. That one's not totally dry yet, so it might diffuse a little bit, which might actually look kind of cool. Okay. This one, I'll do in a little bit darker gray. Another thing you can do is you can start by um, putting the pigment there, and then you could dry your brush off and just kind of just get some water and kind of slowly drag it over. That can create some really interesting bleed as well. Let's see how that dries. They're so tiny. Okay. Add some more shadow in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and then these ones up here, I think that big one can be beige. Okay. 
and then that littler one. Let's do that in a lighter gray. And that one is not fully dry, so it is diffusing a little bit, bleeding a little bit. That is a okay. Okay. pretty good. We'll let that dry a little bit and then we'll probably add a little bit more definition there. I'm going to go back on this one and do kind of like a little darker brown lip. I'm actually going to do the handles a little bit darker. Cute. Okay. Do the same thing with this. So there's just a little bit more definition there. So the shelves, I'm going to do, actually I'm going to add a little bit more, some dark accents in there. So which color do I want to use here? Let's use this one. Oops. Okay. So we're going to add, this one's still pretty wet on some areas. I kind of like that. I'm going to let it bleed into the bottom a little bit there. Good. I really don't like these. I really don't know what to do about them. So what I think I'm going to do is kind of just forget that they're there. Um, we're going to go over them. I just don't like those colors at all. We're going to go over them and make something different. I have no idea what kind of plant this is. This is not a real plant. I hope you enjoy my comment. And we're gonna do the systems like that. Okay. We're kind of going for a modern look, so there you go. Dr. Seuss shrubs. Okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with how those have turned out. That one's still drying. I'm probably gonna add some accent to that. In the meantime, we'll work on the shelves so those can get drying. Um, so because I'm going to make the backdrop mm, fairly blue, I'm actually going to do the shelves a little bit warmer, kind of red wood tone, just so that there's some contrast, otherwise I'm afraid it's just going to be very, very cool. Which, if that's what you're going for, that's totally fine. But for me, I would like a little bit of um, a break with the blues and such. Okay. There's a little shelf. Little bracket. This is really complicated, this angle that I've made for myself, unfortunately. Because I'm not very good at doing straight lines without my wrist being on the paper, so. <laughs> I made this difficult task for myself. All right, go on up like that, some little brackets. Cool beans, all right. That's pretty good. Hopefully these are straight lines, you can tell better than I can. And I like how these are bleeding and there's some lighter and darker sections. I'm going to try to avoid that gray a little bit there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I really need this to dry up, so I'm going to take a little bit of that out. I'm going to add a little bit darker on this side. Okay, cool. That looks good. Alright, so before I do the background, I need to let this dry fully. I do not want everything bleeding everywhere, um, so we're going to have to wait a minute to do that. 
Okay, so this is mostly dry, and in order to not get too much bleed on the parts that are still a little bit wet, I'm actually going to go through and just um, wet the whole page. Okay, just a little bit more here. That's unfortunate. We all make mistakes. Okay, thankfully watercolor is easy to pick up when you mess up. So that's good, it's making some good, some nice bleeds in here. Perfect. Doo -doo -doo. And I might go over some of these pots again once this blue dries. again. Trying not to mess this up. Okay. You can see I did not do a great job organizing where I was painting, so we've got some spots that have some pretty harsh lines here. So I'm just going to go over those with water. Try to blend those a little bit more. Maybe add a little bit more pigment on top so we get that. Get rid of that harsh line there. There we go, that looks better. I'm gonna just soften that a little bit. Okay, looking pretty good. Missed a couple spots down there. Okay, but I really like what it's doing with some of these bleeds. That's pretty fun. Uh, there's some darker shadowy spots. Add a little bit more over here. Oh, and I don't think I explained this, but I used washi tape on the corners, uh, which is a Japanese tape, paper tape, paper tape, paper tape, that I use when I know that I'm going to be putting a lot of water on my paintings and also uh, ones that I want a border on. So. What it does, it holds down the paper, keeps it from warping too much, and it also creates a nice crisp edge, and I'll show you that at the end when I take the tape off. Um, right now I'm just going to retouch a couple of these here that I accidentally messed up. Let's see. Um, okay, for the most part that was pretty clean. These. I was hoping that they would be defined enough on their own, but I'm not super happy with how that turned out. So we're going to do a little bit of defining on our own. Just a little tiny, little tiny line. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, another thing that just I don't, I just did that on accident, but I'll show you. So my brush right now is pretty dry, but it still has some pigment on it. So sometimes it's kind of fun to create some texture. Go back through and just use your dry brush. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Kind of rustic, there we go. Okay, so basically I'm just showing you a bunch of different techniques and you can combine them however you'd like and it might not always work like this, but. Okay, and so I know that I told you at the beginning of this that I would use my brush to do calligraphy. I no longer think that that is achievable due to the fact that the background is so dark and it's going to take a while to dry. And I was going to do a lighter blue background, but I just decided I didn't want that. So <laughs> we've changed our minds and I think I'm just going to use 
um, a Sharpie and I will show you what that looks like. But um, I'll do a different video to show you how I would normally do calligraphy with a brush and with watercolor. It is incredibly tricky, so this is a lot to combine in one video. Um, so we'll do that a different one. But I'm going to grab a Sharpie over here. Let's see. And a lot of pens. Okay. Let's see if this one works. There we go. That one works. I'm going to do that. So we do need to let it dry for just a minute, so just wait another minute. Okay, this is fairly dry, so I'm going to start putting the Bible verse in. And I'm going to do it in calligraphy, but a little bit different calligraphy. Um, I don't want to use a brush pen, so I'm just going to do it with a straight Sharpie. Um, but I will start lettering, and I'll speed this part up so you guys don't have to watch the entire thing. I have a different video on brush calligraphy that you could watch if you'd like. Alrighty, basically finished. I'm just going to sign the bottom of this. Okay, and I will take off the tape to show you what a great job it does. Look at those crisp lines, looking good. Maybe not so much on that side, but that's okay. Still kept my paper from warping, which is impressive because I did use so much water on this one. <laughs> so that's the main thing is that it kept it flat, uh, which cheaper watercolor paper does not do quite as well. And without using washi tape, it would probably be super bent and crazy. So there we are our little plant wall with a Bible verse. Um, hopefully there were some techniques in there that were helpful to you, um, helped you learn just some new ways of painting. And if you do anything that is inspired by this tutorial, please post it on Instagram and tag me at Ashley Chase Creates. I always love to see what you make. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and happy painting.